So what is a digital nomad? Well, hey guys, it's Ora Pampa here recording live and direct from Bene, Kotonou to be exact. Hope you're doing well. Well, I just thought I'd tell you a little bit about becoming a digital nomad. If we look at masterclass.com, it says a digital nomad is a person who works remotely, either full-time or part-time while traveling to new places. Digital nomads often work from public libraries, co-working spaces, and coffee shops, connecting their laptops, smartphones, or tablets to the Wi-Fi hubs in these locations, or using their hotspots. Guys, guess what? I think I'm a digital nomad. Ever since I read the Tim Ferriss book, uh, The 4-Hour Workweek, I've always thought, you know what? I'd like to one day, one day, one day, be that person who can work from a beach, just as long as I have my laptop and my internet connection with me on my phone. And guess what? I can do that now. It's ridiculous to think that I've actually achieved that. It's one of those things where you think about it, you hope you'd be able to do it, but you're never sure if you're actually gonna do it. Now, I've become a digital nomad in that I'm traveling and working, um, even though I'm not physically in my home country. You know, so, which is really, really cool. Like, I'm super stoked about it. I just thought I'd share that with you. You may be wondering, well, why would anyone want to be a digital nomad and be traveling from place to place? Well, why wouldn't you? It means you get to travel to different places, experience different cultures, get to know people, just widen your network of people um, that you know from all over the world. And you get to continue working, so it's not like you're taking a break, but instead you're able to, for example, work during the day and then decide to explore in the evening or take a few days um, to explore and then continue work on other days. Or maybe take an afternoon, for example, to go for a walk on the beach. Like there's so much you can do as a digital nomad. It's great. But you obviously have to have a good job that will let you do this. So a job that offers you that sort of flexibility. For me, the way I've achieved this is that I work as a voiceover artist. A voiceover artist basically uses their voice to kind of convey a message, but may not necessarily be in front of the camera. So if you think of e-learning or audiobooks or even the voice behind adverts, all of these are things that require a voice to do them. And I tend to be that voice. So that's what I do. The majority of my clients have never met me in person before. We've met online on Zoom calls sometimes, but not necessarily in person. Now, what they really need from me is my voice, and I'm able to do that from anywhere I have an internet connection and my mobile vocal booth, and which I carry around with me when I go traveling. So I'm very fortunate in that. As a business, it also affords me some extra time, which I can then use to work on the other businesses and other activities I'm involved in. So I think I've mentioned a few times on this channel, um, I am doing a PhD part-time and online, but then I'm also running two other businesses, which I'll tell you more about sometime in the future when things get to a certain point. But yeah, because I'm able to do that, I'm able to then have time to focus on these other things as well and grow those other things such that in future, I'll be able to have those businesses running and I can continue doing the voiceover if I choose to, but I'll also have those businesses running and hopefully by the end of uh, the period, so hopefully four years, I'd also have my PhD. So I'm looking forward to that. Just wanted to pause the video at this point to say, if this video is giving you any value, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're not subscribed, why aren't you? Go ahead and hit subscribe. All right, back to the video. The digital nomad lifestyle is an interesting one. Being a digital nomad comes with its pros and cons. I've mentioned some of the pros already, such as being able to explore new and different places, enjoy different cultures. You also get to meet people from different walks of life and kind of expand your surface area um, for great things to happen to you by doing so. Um, besides that, you've got some flexibility in terms of how you spend your time. So because I'm an entrepreneur, I kind of control my time. Now that means that I do need to put in the work um, at different times, but it does mean that I'm able to kind of slot in times where I can go exploring and doing other things. So it's really cool for that. Now, depending on the kind of work you're doing and where you choose to travel to, it may also mean a lower cost of living. However, you've got to be careful about this because some places are obviously more expensive to live than others, particularly when you're paying for accommodation. That can be expensive sometimes. But I'm still early on this uh, nomad journey, so I'm still you know, figuring things out. Um, but so far, so good. I'm enjoying it. I mean, I'm currently here in Bene Republic. Presently, I'm in Cotonou and it's a nice place. Where I'm staying is pretty close to the beach. Literally, the beach is about five, 10 minutes walk from uh, where I live. So 
or where I'm staying rather, uh, which is great. I can go to the beach. I like walking along the beach, you know, those long walks across the beach. Um, so I enjoy that and I can do that and also go traveling and just see some sights and sounds and also get to meet people here. So that's quite cool. Now, people might be wondering, but hold on, aren't there any cons for working remotely and working as a digital nomad? Well, yes, there are. I'll tell you a few. So here are some cons that you might encounter if you're working remotely. First off, it could be a bit distracting. I mean, if you're constantly traveling, um, actually getting work done could be a bit difficult if you don't pace yourself. So sometimes it might pay to actually give yourself maybe more time than you would on a holiday to actually get to a place, settle there, maybe do some research beforehand so you know where you can work from. And then that will help with making things a bit more seamless and a bit more um, comfortable for you to work in and not get too distracted by all the wonderful uh, things you could be doing traveling. The second thing I'd say could be a con, maybe homesickness. So if you haven't been away from home for too long before, you might find it a bit disconcerting, particularly when you're in a new environment and nothing quite seems as you're used to. So some homesickness may happen there, but then that's why there are video calls, that's why there are phone calls. Yes, you might miss a few things, but bear in mind you are getting new experiences and you can always go back home when you need to, when you want to. So that's something to consider as well. A third thing that could be a con would be a sense of community, so actually meeting people. Now, if you're not a very outgoing person, you might wanna to learn to be a little bit more outgoing so that you can meet people. Otherwise, you might end up just kind of feeling a bit isolated or lonely if you don't get to meet other people in the places you travel to. And that's one of the beauties of traveling abroad, right? So being able to meet people from different places and different locations. So it just takes maybe a little bit of um, pushing yourself out there if you're not as outgoing. Um, as you might want to be, just push yourself a little bit and try and go to networking events or other events going on and try to meet people that way. Or even better still, try going to co-working spaces because there you can meet other people who have a similar mindset, who are working on things and who are working remotely. So that could be a, a way of meeting people. But if you're not careful, it could get a bit lonely. So you want to guard against that. The cons I've mentioned haven't really been a deterrent for me in terms of traveling. Having said that, this is my first foray into being a digital nomad, so we're going to see how that goes. Um, for me, my reason for wanting to do this, there are many reasons actually. One is I wanted to travel and explore and get to know different countries, but in particular I feel like a lot of the things I'm going to be doing in future are going to be uh, focused on the African continent, in which case I felt like it might be a good idea. Sorry, there's something buzzing here. In which case I felt it might be a good idea for me to actually go and experience being in different African countries beyond Nigeria, which is a country I'm more familiar with, or Zimbabwe, which is another country I've been to and spent some time in. You know, actually get to know other African countries, what things are like there. Are they different to the countries I'm used to? Are they similar? Um, and what are the synergies? What ideas can I take from one location and then apply to the other? I'm already seeing many ideas here um, in Bene in terms of business opportunities, um, both for Bene and back in Nigeria. So these are things I'm looking at and considering as well. So for me, it's definitely an eye opener. It's definitely something that um, is great and I would recommend it. At least try, try it once. Try it once is what I'd say. So you might be wondering, okay, Aura, yes, I'm interested in being this digital nomad, but how do I actually go about it? Well, first of all, you need to find out about jobs that allow you to do some remote working. There are different kinds of jobs, um, such as being a virtual assistant, such as being a voice of artist like I am, um, being an entrepreneur, as long as you can run your business um, by still keeping in touch with people over the phone or by computer, that's another way to do it. What other ways, could what other jobs are there? I mean, you could, if you're a doctor, for example, you could see about maybe going into telemedicine. Um, if you're into marketing, you could consider doing digital marketing and running that as a business. So helping other organizations or businesses with their digital marketing. As long as you get the job done, they may not necessarily need to see you face to face. Or maybe you travel to go see the clients and then you go back to wherever you're having your digital nomad life. So there are different ways of getting into being a digital nomad in a sense. The important thing is being able to have um, an opportunity to earn money, but do it remotely sort of thing. And now with um, everything that's happened with the pandemic, people and organizations are more open to people working remotely. So it's something you might consider. And hey, maybe even at your current job, you may be able to negotiate with your employer for you to work 
from a different location. Um, if you can work remotely already, you're already one step ahead. So you might as well just consider it and see maybe you could go work from a different country. And you could, you could test the waters. You don't have to go for, I don't know, a whole year. You could test the waters and try it for a week or two and see how that goes. Um, but definitely being a digital nomad from where I'm standing now, granted, I'm still early in this game, right? I'm still early in it, but I have been working remotely for the past, uh, quite a lot actually for the past uh, year or two. But now I'm doing this, um, not working remotely as in working from home remotely. I'm working from another location remotely. I sort of did that a little bit. So I tested the waters a little bit uh, when I was in full-time employment and I got to work uh, remotely. But now I'm doing it as an entrepreneur and it's great. I'm really happy and I'm grateful for the opportunity. So just wanted to let you know about it. And if you're interested, you know, put a few questions in the comments. I may not have covered some bits in this video that you think would be quite interesting. Or maybe you have some other questions and you're curious about this remote working lifestyle. Well, send me a message um, or put a message in the comments box and then I'd be happy to answer those. And if you are a digital nomad, let me know and let me know how that's going. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video useful. All right, I'll catch you in the next one. Take care. Bye.